standing on the promises of God. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. One of the verses say that cannot fail. And they cannot fail, and I cannot fall because I'm standing on the promises of God. Say praise the Lord. Praise, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everybody doing okay this morning? I'm sure glad you're here. I'm certainly happy to be here. Old winers or new wineskins. Old winers or new wineskins. Our scriptures this morning is going to be in Mark, and we'll get to those in just a moment. But have you ever known someone who was a classic whiner? You ever known somebody that was a classic whiner? Uh, they're constantly complaining about their health or the weather or what's going on in Washington, which that's a lot to complain about nowadays. But do you know somebody like that? And as you're thinking about that, do you think somebody here in this room might have thought that about you? Ooh, okay. Well, chronic whiners and complainers are everywhere. They're everywhere. And I came across a list of actual complaints that were sent in to a travel company. And here's a few of them. Here's a few of those actual complaints. The beach was too sandy. We had to clean everything when we returned to our room. Yeah? That's like me when I go to Corpus or something. It's just like, there's too much sand. <laughs> we were told, I'm sorry, no one told us there would be fish in the ocean. The children were too scared. <laughs> or I was bitten by a mosquito. The brochure didn't say anything. It didn't mention mosquitoes. We bought Ray-Ban sunglasses for $3 from a vendor outside the hotel and discovered they were fake. <laughs> complain, complain, complain. Wine, wine, wine. Well, in our scriptures today, we're going to discover that there was a group of religious whiners who followed Jesus around complaining about what he did and what he said. If you look in your scriptures, we're going to go to Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Mark chapter 2, verses 18 through 22. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? Jesus answered, how can the guest of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will, take, will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. He goes on to say that no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. Praise the Lord for the Scriptures. Praise the Lord. Now, the Pharisees... As we were talking about last week, and this is kind of a continuation, it's in the same area. The Pharisees were professional whiners. They followed Jesus around like the moral police and criticized everything he did and everything he said. They whined. And here we see they said, they said this, they said, John the Baptist's disciples fast, and of course we fast. But you boys, you boys aren't very religious. We don't ever see you fasting. We never see you do that. Well, Jesus took their complaint and responded with three many parables here. Some of, the peril, some of the parables that we read that Jesus says are very long, like the parable of the prodigal son or the parable of the, of the good Samaritan. But these three parables are only a few words, and, but they have an explosive truth contained in them for us. 
The first of the three parables is about a wedding party. The second one is about a patch. And the third is about wineskins. So let's try number one. Number one, a wedding feast isn't the time to fast. A wedding feast isn't the time to fast. Now John the Baptist disciples, they, fast, they fasted regularly. And so did the Pharisees. And they were upset that Jesus' disciples were partying while they were suffering. The Pharisees fasted two days a week. But they fasted simply as an outward display of their goodness. They were just showing off. They were fasting to be seen by others. They were fasting to be seen by others. Now fasting is a wonderful spiritual discipline. Jesus fasted and prayed often. But it wasn't a ritual designed for others to see. The Pharisees whitened their faces and piled ashes on their heads and moaned and groaned and so everyone would know they were spiritual. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, Matthew 6, 16 through 18, it says this. This is what it says. It says, when you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. Instead, put oil on your head and wash your face so that it will not be obvious to men that you are fasting, but only to your Father who is unseen. I'm sorry, and only to your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Will reward you. Now the Old Testament, as we go back into fasting, the Old Testament commanded Jews to fast only one day a year. That was the commandment, to, 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 to fast only one day, and that's Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. But the Pharisees had taken a wonderful act of spiritual discipline and changed it into a badge of super self-righteousness. So in answering their, their criticism, Jesus compared himself to a bridegroom. Now, if you think about it in American weddings today, in American weddings, the couple leave immediately for their honeymoon, right? They take off really quick from the wedding. But in Jewish weddings, the couple stay and were treated like king and queen for a week-long celebration, long party. A week-long celebration. It wasn't a time for fasting. It was a time to feast. A time to feast. And Jesus identified himself as the bridegroom. And the bride is the church. But at this point, the bride hasn't yet been revealed. But she was waiting patiently for her time to make her appearance. Jesus said that while the party is going on, while the, the, that's going on, it's not the time to fast. It's, it, it, uh, that's not the time to fast. It's time to feast. But the bridegroom was going to leave, and then the disciples, once the bridegroom leaves, then it's time to fast. The disciples will then fast. So what, what do we see here? What do we see? What, what are we being taught here? Life is about a joyous relationship with Jesus. Amen? No religious rituals. A relationship with Jesus. With Jesus. The Christian life is more than a wedding celebration, more like a wedding celebration than a funeral procession. The Christian life should be happy. The real issue of the Pharisees were addressing was this. They'd say, and what they were saying here, this is their attitude. It's not fair for you guys to enjoy life while we have to endure religion. 
If you were really holy, you would be miserable like us. That's what they're trying to tell them. The Pharisees were griping while Jesus' disciples were grinning. Jesus, the Pharisees were somber while Jesus' disciples were singing. The Pharisees were jealous while Jesus' group was jubilant. Amen? Praise the Lord. Which group are you? Which group are you? If we turn to Isaiah 61, verse 3. Here is a promise. You're talking about standing on the promises, how that fits in. There is a promise right there. Isaiah 61, 3 says this. It is a promise to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Amen? Whew. The Old Testament was always real wordy, right? <laughs> but it come to the point, it's a promise. It's a promise. Mark it off as one of your promises that you can continually claim. Before you came to church today, you had to make a choice about what clothes you would wear. Unless you got my wife and she picks them all out for me, <laughs> lays them out. I get the colors right. In the same way, you have a spiritual decision to make daily. You can wear a garment of praise or you can, you can carry around a blanket of despair. Joy and praise are gifts from God. Amen. Amen. So there are times to fast, but even when you fast, you shouldn't lose your joy. Now, one thing we want to remember here, and we were talking a little bit about last week, was the devil wants to come and kill, steal, and destroy. So don't make a deal with the devil. Satan cannot rob you of your salvation, but he will try to steal the joy of your salvation. He will try to do that. Guard it carefully. Guard it carefully. Don't let him steal your joy. Amen? The second parable. A new patch will ruin an old garment. A new patch will ruin an old garment. Let's take that apart. In, in today's time, fabrics don't shrink when they're washed. But in Jesus' time, new cloth would always shrink after the first few times, after, after it was washed. So if you had an old robe with a hole in it, you would be foolish to sew on a new patch of cloth on top of that old robe. Obviously, when it was washed, your new patch would shrink, but the old cloth would stay the same. And what would happen? And rip. The new patch would, would try and be shrinking, but the old cloth, the old robe would not move. Now that was just good common sense back then. Everybody knew it. It would, it would have ruined the new patch and the old garment, both at the same time. But what is Jesus teaching us here with this parable. What is he teaching us? Jesus doesn't just patch up your old lives. He gives you a new life. Amen. Amen. He gives you a new life. Now here in this parable, the old garment was the Old Testament. The old covenant. What we would call the law. Jesus was saying he didn't just come to improve the old covenant. He came to replace it with something totally new. There was no way this new covenant could be used to patch up the old one. 
The Pharisees were threatened by this because their religion was based upon keeping the law instead of living under grace. Living under grace. Now, some people think that they're pretty good and that they only need Jesus to just patch up some problems. There's some problem areas in their lives. Let me say this. Most men, y'all shake your head, love duct tape. Amen? You love duct tape, right? Right? And you love WD-40, right? You always got one of those. You may not have any wrenches in your toolbox, but you got some duct tape and you got some WD-40. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. All men need to be happy is some duct tape and some WD-40. Now, if it moves and it shouldn't move, what do you use? The duct tape. And if it's supposed to move and it doesn't move, what do you use? The WD-40. Amen? Right? Okay. But the truth is, Jesus didn't come to put duct tape on our hearts. He came to give you and I a new heart. Amen? His purpose is to transform you, to transform me. The Bible says that we need a new birth. If you look in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says this. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old one has gone and the new has come. Amen. If the Bible says it, we'll stop right there with that one. On that one. Praise the Lord. Number three, new wine will crack old wineskins. New wine will crack old wineskins. The third parable is talking about that. We, now, we use bottles now today to hold wine today, but in Jesus' time, wine was most often stored in goat skins. Now, fresh wine skin is soft and supple. And when new, new wine was put into it, gas was released from the process of fermentation. The new wine, then the new wine skin would stretch to accommodate this expansion. Now, everybody that was here when this was being written and listening to these parables, everybody listening to the parable probably rolled with laughter about the idea that they knew what would happen if you put new wine into an old wineskin. They knew what would happen already. That a, a wineskin that had already been stretched and would stretch no more. Pop. Put new wine in there, and it won't stretch anymore. It's going to burst. The seams would burst open, and the new wine leaks out and is lost. And a thirsty person would be denied drink if they made this mistake. So what is Jesus teaching here with this third parable? What is he teaching here? Beware of a hardened heart that refuses to accept new revelations of truth from God's word. Be aware of a hardened heart. A human nature rebels against the idea of anything that seems to threaten the good old days. Amen? And the good old ways. But our, and our model seems to have been lately that if it's not broken, don't fix it. Jesus compares that attitude to an old wineskin, and he is actually saying, he says here, if you don't fix it, you'll break. If you don't fix it, you'll break. Jesus was addressing an attitude that resists change on anything new. Because we like the old too much, 
like an old wineskin. Our hearts and minds can calcify until we become so inflexible we cannot accept change. When faced with a new idea of going into Canaan, you remember the, the Israelites out in the desert? They were getting ready to go into Canaan. And they were going to be taking the land. But when they were faced with that new idea of doing it, they said, no, no, no. We like the old wine better. And God said, okay then, go take another lap around Mount Sinai. Go take another lap. Okay? Go take another lap around Mount Sinai. Okay? One more time. Go take another lap around Mount Sinai. Forty years they wandered on the old paths, eating the same manna. Why? Because they refused to accept the new wine of God's plan. Amen? They refused to accept it. So I ask you this morning, what kind of person are you? What kind of person are you? Are you like an old wineskin? Unable to change? Unable to expand? Inflexible? Like an old wineskin? What is God saying to you? What is God saying to you? Do you need to stop acting like the Christian life is a funeral? And start celebrating. Celebrating because, because we are espoused to a bridegroom who is coming back soon. Amen? We are the church. We are the bride. Do you need to stop trying to patch up your old life and allow Jesus to put on the new robe of righteousness on you? Do you need that? Jesus is providing new wine. He has plenty of it. He's providing new wine. Have you stopped growing? Have you stopped changing? Have you done that? God forbid that any of us should be old whiners. Let's be new wineskins. Praise the Lord. Let's be new wineskins. Let us pray. If you bow your heads with me. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I want to be emptied of all that is of the old life so that I may be freshly filled. Each one of us, we want that, Lord day by day with your spirit to fill us anew every day. Thank you, Lord, for making me a part of your kingdom. Thank you. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. And all the people said, amen. If you'll stand with me as we have the invitation. privilege that you have, carry everything to God in prayer. Praise His name. Praise His name.